YouTubers, Pastor Bob. I hope you guys are having a blessed week this week. I know mine went pretty good. Hey, listen, I want to talk to you for just a minute about unity. And uh, not all that exciting of a subject, but one that's important nevertheless. Have you ever known anyone who is just in a constant state of drama? Have you ever known anyone that's just in a constant state of drama? And if they're not in a state of drama, they will create drama. <laughs> and if you can sit there and say, no, I don't know anybody like that, well, maybe you're it. But anyway, people that are in a constant state of drama, and all you got to do is look on Facebook, because I'm serious. I'll look on Facebook, and I'll see people, relatives, that will post something that 20 years ago you would be ashamed of, you would want anybody to know. People air their dirty laundry for everybody. But people that are in a constant state of drama, they create drama. They couldn't be peaceful for one day if their life depended on it. We all, we all have relatives like that, that one relative. Well, listen, there's a sin that Solomon talks about, seven of them, as a matter of fact, in Proverbs. And he says it's an abomination in God's eyes. And I want to go over one of those. This is what it says in Proverbs 6, 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Seven that are an abomination unto him. A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that are swift into running to mischief a false witness that speaks lies, and he that sows discord among brethren. And that's the one I wanted to talk about. He that sows discord among brethren. People, that is an absolute abomination to God, and that's got to be one thing that we as children of God never do. We never do. This is referring to anything Anything said, anything done, anything revealed that will drive a wedge between friends. And this is something that everyone needs to work on, myself included. I'm serious. Because I hear something about somebody, especially if it's funny, I've got to watch myself that I don't repeat it. I'm, listen, this is something that I need to work on. We all do. Some of the examples are, you know, you hear something about someone, funny or whatever, and you tell somebody else about it. You, you, you revealed somebody that, hey, this person was talking about you the other day. This is what they told me about you. You tell somebody somebody's flaw. Well, you know, you know he's mean to his wife. You know, she really, she just, she spends way too much money. I don't like the way she dresses. You know, just, just things that you talk to somebody about someone else and it drives a wedge. It makes that person think less of that person. Anything you say about somebody that makes somebody else think less of that person, that's driving a wedge between friends. That's exactly what this scripture is talking about. And the cure is simple. Whenever you get ready to say something, you ask yourself three simple questions. You stop and think before you speak. Number one, does it even need to be said? Does it need to be said? If someone was talking to you about this person, and then the next day you see this person, do you need to tell them that that's what they said about them? And usually the answer is no. Number two, will it help? Whatever the situation you're in, will you speaking that about someone help the situation? And third, will it hurt? Will it hurt anybody involved if you say that? Does it need to be said? Will it help or will it hurt? People, everybody needs to work on this. And if you're saying to yourself right now, this doesn't apply to me, boy, does it apply to you. That's what James said in James 3.8. This is what James says. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. No one can tame the tongue. 
We've all got a ton of little stuff about all kinds of people around us that we would just love to tell somebody else. It's there. So we all need to work on this, every single one of us. And this is why. This is why you need to work on this. Number one, you don't want to hurt anybody and you don't want to drive a wedge between friends because it's an abomination to God. But this is what God says. God says if you will fight this, and if you'll just, instead of speaking that thing out, if you'll just hold it within yourself, if you will work on this, God said there's a blessing that comes with it. What does God say in the Beatitudes? He says, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. If you fight this, if you have the opportunity to say something and you don't say it, you will be blessed. That's a promise from God. Peace is a blessing. When you don't say things like that, you bring peace to everyone. This is what it says in Psalms 133.1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. People listen. James says no one can tame the tongue. We all need to work on this. Don't stir the pot. Don't stir the pot. Don't mix up things that don't need to be mixed up. Instead, bite your tongue, and if you bite your tongue, you will be blessed. That's what the Bible says. Anyway, I just want to give you something to think about. Heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.